Lori Houston's News for the Heart is dedicated to helping you give a voice to your own soul. Our hearts have the power to free us from pain and the struggles that keep us from awakening to our true essence. Join Lori now as we delve into our heart and soul to find the path that will open us to the possibilities and lead us to the life we love to live. All right, and good afternoon. This is News for the Heart. And well, we're back for the new season. And I have Tom with me, Tom Campbell, which I adore having with me. And we love having talks and we've been doing it for a really long time now. So mm-hmm. it's always great. And uh, so welcome back, Tom. Right. Thank you, Lori. It's good to be back here. I kind of missed our, uh, our sessions there over yeah. the summer. Yeah, they're always, uh, they're always fun. They are fun. And so mm-hmm. today I thought we were going to talk about the differences between giving up, letting go, and living your best life. We know that giving up is more about letting your fears take over. We know that letting go is about letting go of our fears. Living our best life, that's, that's one of the things that I've been sort of looking at lately. And I think that's something I know that with your book, we can get lost and want to live in an alternate reality instead of the reality we're in. So I think that's Mm -hmm. the one thing you've sort of mentioned with regards to Tom's park is that, you know, don't get lost in it. Just spend an hour a day, which is something that we all can do, but um, yeah. So let's just chat about this because I think it's, I think it's an interesting conversation. Mm. I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, you know, the, the living your best life, I believe is not something you do. I think it's just something that happens to you because you have given up your fear. Let let go of your ego, let go of your beliefs, just meet the world head on, you know, world, here I am, you know, and interact with it. Don't interact with it coming with all sorts of negativity in your mind. So you let that go. That's kind of the, the letting go. And if you can do that to where you just interact with the world the way it comes and you interact positively and you, you stay positive, you don't start, oh, this is going to happen and that might happen and, you know, this is not good and that's not good and I don't get along with my family and, blah, 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 and it goes on and on and on. And if you dwell on all that negative stuff, then your life becomes negative. And you don't lead your best life. But if you can let that negativity go and just interact with life in a positive way, and the things that aren't positive, like there's not enough money in your checking account today to buy the thing you want, you know, instead of finding some kind of negative problem with that, accept that as, well, that's just a a challenge to how are you going to live your life? You know, how are you going to deal with that? Well, you may just have to put it off until later, or you may have to borrow some money or, you know, but you can deal with it in some way without being negative. And then I think if you can do that, your best life just happens. Once you start just being and not trying to manipulate reality to be the way you want it, needing it to be the way you want it, just accepting it the way it is, then the best life just automatically starts to unfold for you. You know, the thing that's between us and our best life is our fear. That's, that's the thing that's, you know, we don't have to do something special to find that peace and that happiness. That just happens to us when we let go of the fear. So it's a, I think if you, if you try to find that best life, you'll probably have trouble. You'll be chasing it around and never seem to quite get there. Well, if I could just solve this problem, then that would be perfect. And if I could just put one problem after the next, after the next, after the next will show up. And you'll never quite be able to get there. You're always chasing it in pursuit of it. You know, happiness isn't something you can wrestle to the ground and make yours. Happiness is something you just have to let happen to you because you're not driven by your fears. And if you're not driven by your fears, you will be happy. Just by definition, it just works that way. It's impossible for it to not work that way. The only way you can not be happy 
and live that best life is by having fear. That's the only thing that gets in the way of it, having fear. Well, sure, you know, things happen. Stressful things happen. You get fired from your job, you know, your dog dies, you know, things happen. It's not that life is all Pollyanna and everything will always be rosy and perfect. It's just that when those things happen, you don't get negative. You don't get upset by them. You say, okay, well, I'll have to find a new job or I'll have to get another puppy or you just deal with it in a positive way. So by definition, you're never really stressed or unhappy or upset about anything because life just is what it is. So I think it's the attitude. It's all we have to change is our attitude. And that sounds pretty simple. All you have to do is change your attitude. But that attitude is a tough thing to change because you've had that attitude now for the last, you know, 30 or 40 or 50 years. And it's a little hard to take that attitude and rearrange it. But that's the challenge, really, is to just have a different attitude toward life and toward everybody else. You know, we have this, this attitude that we know what the best way should be for us and for everybody else. And if everybody would just do that, then life would be great. But that's the wrong attitude. That'll just cause you frustration. Because as much as you want other people to be the way you want them, they will be some other way. Because whenever you push on something, it tends to push back. So you just have to let people be how they are. And if they're grouchy and unfriendly, well, then they're grouchy and unfriendly. Deal with that in a positive way. You know, don't take it personally or get upset with it. It's not your problem. It's their problem. And be nice to them. Give them hugs, you know, and be nice. But if they're still grouchy and fussy and negative, and, well, let them be that way. That's okay. That's not a downer for you as long as you don't have fear or you don't have the need for them to be a certain way. So it all boils down to our attitude. What's our attitude toward ourselves, toward life, toward other people? And if we can just fix that attitude to stay positive, then our best life just happens. Everything just happens. Those people that you would really love to meet but never have, you just meet them. Yeah. You know? And those people that you really would like to let go of and wish they were someplace else, well, they don't bother you anymore. All you have to do is fix your attitude. So that makes it sound simple, but it's it's not quite that simple. There's no little attitude adjustment, you know, control on the back of your head or anything. But if you really, nice. really want to, you can. You know, it's a matter of how much do you want to? You know, how much do you want to change? Do you want to change enough that you go out and start walking 10 miles a day? <laughs> you know? Is that how much you want to change? You know, you're willing to do something just different. You know, well, yes, then you have to do that. And it takes energy and it takes effort and it takes dedication. And if you get around, and say, well, not today, I just don't feel like it today. Well, you know, that's not the right attitude. The attitude is to just be, do, interact, love, care, connect, you know, connect with people. And if you you want to meet nice people, well, go to wherever nice people hang out. <laughs> you know, where do nice people hang out? Probably not in a bar. Probably you know, not on the street corner. You know, probably not at the mall. You know, where do the nice people hang out? Well, think about it. You know, you know what do nice people do? Well, they do all sorts of things. Well, join in doing those all sorts of things. You know, become an ice skater. Uh, become a bird watcher. Uh, you know, go to your library. They have groups that meet and do things. Start a discussion group on your favorite books. I mean, just, you know, do things where you connect with people. Come up with ideas. You know, what do nice people do? Well, they read these kind of books or whatever. Then you just get in with that group, connect with them, socialize. And then you'll find that you have a bunch of really nice friends that are very supportive and caring. Whereas if the way you interact with people is to constantly complain and tell everybody how unfair life has been to you, 
then you're going to surround yourself with a bunch of complainers who think that life is unfair. And you can all be miserable together and make each other even more miserable than you would be otherwise. And you can just, you know, live that way too. But it's just a change, a simple change in, well, not so simple, a hard, <laughs> a hard change in attitude. You know? But it's doable just by wanting to do it. Force of will. I want to be different. And keep that in mind. And if you really do want to, you will. Right. And if you really don't want to, but you think it sounds good to say that you do, well, you'll you'll fiddle with it and fiddle with it, but it'll never quite work out. You have to get to the point that you change who you are. Just do do things differently. You know, a lot of people, especially lately, um, people are getting fed up. They're they're and then when travel wasn't happening, so people kind of left. And there's a lot of people, there's people going, you know, to Costa Rica and different places. Um, and I know in some senses, you know, when you think, oh, living my best life, it's, it's traveling, it's doing all these things. But sometimes I wonder what's the difference between somebody trying to escape <laughs> or mm -hmm. actually really wanting, like, how do you know when it's like something you really, it just, it seems interesting mm -hmm. because it's a question that seems to be going around a lot. It's like, you know, do I want to, do I need to change my whole environment and make, a, you know, new choices? Or is that just a, a way of escaping where I am and hoping that it'll be different in another place? It's like mm -hmm. when somebody, you know, has problems with their job and they get a new job, they're really facing this, they're going to face the same things if they haven't changed who they are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I guess, yeah. 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 Well, there really is no way to tell yeah you know it's not like well if you do this well you're just you know you're really doing it right and if you do that you're trying to escape i think there's it doesn't matter so much what you do it's why you do it mm. that's important and you know you may want to go to costa rica just to escape because you've heard good things about it and oh i want to go there and find good things too mm -hmm. but good things aren't outside of you the good things are inside of you. And if you try to, to find a happy life by going someplace that's happy and find happiness in a place, you can't find happiness in a place. You may be, uh, uh, oh, I don't know, you, you, you may be up and positive for a while about that place because it has nice attributes to it, things that you like. But pretty soon that just becomes every day and there you are stuck with yourself again. And if yourself hasn't changed, then the, the, the good news doesn't last very long before it ends up being just exactly the way it was before. Like you say, if you haven't learned lessons then your second job probably will have the same kind of problems your first job had. It'll just be dressed up in a different picture. It'll, you know, it'll configure itself differently, but it'll be the same thing. You bring all that with you. Happiness is an inside thing, not an outside thing. So this idea that I have to change my environment in order to find, you know, happiness or satisfaction or my best life, that's probably just not true. You can probably find your best life wherever you happen to be right now. Whatever your situation is, you can probably find that best life right there if you were to change your attitude there. Now, sometimes it helps to change your attitude just to go someplace new for a while, you know, where you have new people, new friends, new this and new that, you know, maybe that's, that's good. But if you don't really change who you are, all that newness will redevelop into sameness, just as it was before. So it gets down to why do you want to go to Costa Rica? Why do you want to learn to roller skate? You know, why do you want to do these various things? And it's if the answer is because I want to change, I want to grow up, I want to approach life differently, and I can start with, you know, a different situation. And that's why I want to, I just want to be different. I want to be positive. I don't want to be stuck in old relationships that are full of negativity or whatever. I want newness. Okay, but if you're if you're really going to change, that's your point to change yourself, then it has a fair chance of working out, just like you said, and you're not escaping. 
But if you go there thinking to find the solution someplace else, not inside of you by changing, but a better environment that will work with you better, that won't happen. You will end up, no matter what you, you know, what that dream job is and that dream place, you know, it'll end up being just as bad, if not worse, where you are now. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much what you do, it's why you do it. What's driving you? What's the motivation behind that? Is it to grow up, change yourself, become different? Or is it just to change the environment because you blame your unhappiness on your environment? Now, if I just change my environment, of course, then I'd be happy. I'll go live in some happy space. But if you don't change yourself, you'll go to that happy space and you'll say, look at all these happy people and I'm not happy and all those happy people aggravate me because they're so happy and I'm not. And, you know, if you don't change yourself, then you're going to take your misery with you. So that's the thing, the misery or the happiness, the bliss or the sadness is inside you. And it's not because of your environment. It's in spite of your environment, whatever your environment is, even if you have a not so good relationship, that's probably because your ego and your beliefs are tied up in that relationship and not and making it not so good. Right. And even if the other person doesn't change, if you do, that relationship can get a lot better just because you change. So yeah, you don't have to go anywhere or do anything particularly. Yes, you know, like I say, if you want to meet nice people, go to where the nice people are. But there's nice people everywhere. There's bad people, lots of nice people everywhere. So it really doesn't matter where you go. There's going to be some nice people, some not nice people. And you just need to, to filter out that, engage it positively, positively. And after that, everything works out. That perfect life just happens. You know, that life you want, that best life just happens. And all sorts of new opportunities pop up. Yeah. yeah, you attract new things, new things are attracted to you, you're attracted to those things and your life just goes off on a whole new path. But just keep doing the same thing you're doing now and hoping that a, a change of environment will make your life better. It's not likely. Now, there may be a few cases where that's the case where your environment just is a real, you know, a real drag, well, then changing it might be a good idea. But if you don't change, Right. You're changing your environment for most people most of the time isn't going to help. Yes, I can imagine a situation where the environment is just terrible and to get out of that environment would be a good thing to do. You know, it's not that, you know, the environment's irrelevant. It's not. It's important, but it's not the key ingredient. The key ingredient is your attitude. Yeah. I just, I'm thinking of, you know, these families that went and they said that they were going to Costa Rica because they wanted a, a, a life that wasn't so filled with social media and just, mm -hmm. you know, something quieter, something more simple. I guess that's the word simple, a more simple life. And of course they're on social media every day. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Well, but you it's know. like, yeah, okay. But is that oh. giving your kids and everybody the new experience that you're hoping? Or is that just, and yeah, and, and of course, you know, Costa Rica is still a third world country that has all sorts of interesting things that could happen while you're there. So it could be good, it could be bad. <laughs> sure. depends, right? Just the same as like you said, everywhere else. It's yeah, everywhere uh, else. You know, I'm sure we could list, you know, 10 really good points about going to Costa Rica mm -hmm. and the advantages. And I bet we could list 10 terrible points about mm -hmm. the disadvantages of going to Costa Rica. And, you know, or the same thing about wherever it is you live. You've got advantages. You've got disadvantages. Grass is always and, greener, right? <laughs> yeah, grass always looks greener. But, you know, it only looks greener on the other side of the fence if you're dissatisfied and negative about yourself and what you've got. 
And mostly it's not you're being negative about your environment. It's, it's you're negative about yourself. Right. That is the key thing. Because when we feel negative about ourselves, we start interpreting all sorts of things out there in our environment in a negative way. Our self-image, a sense of self, do we feel inadequate, you know, not good enough, lost, left out, left behind, you know, you have all these kind of feelings. Well, that gets projected on a world and you end up with an environment that looks to you like it's negative and oppressive and difficult. Well, that's really not so much the environment's fault. That's just the way you're looking at it, right? You know, to get away from the hubbub, you know, you say, okay, I'm going to go someplace where it's, where it's a beautiful scenery and rural. All right, but it's going to be 20 minutes to the nearest store. It's going to be, you know, an hour to the, to the nearest city. And there's advantages and there's disadvantages in that. And it just depends on, you know, what you want to do with your life. And why. And why. Yeah, why you want to do it. For most people, if they put down their social media, they wouldn't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> if they turned off the TV, they wouldn't, want to, they wouldn't know what to do in the evenings. You know, they would, they would like run into, you know, what, sh what should I do? No social media, no TV. Well, hey, get acquainted with yourself. Go meditate. Uh, read a book. Uh, have a have a meaningful conversation. You know, do something else. It's uh, you know, there's a lot of things to do, and the mind numbing stuff that just kind of grinds on and grinds on without end is things like social media and TV. That's kind of the, the bottom of the barrel. That's where you end up when you don't take the initiative to do anything more significant. So when you take the kind of the, the zero null order approach to it, that, you know, I'm not going to do anything, then you end up on social media and, you know, watching TV with your time. And that time could be spent doing things more interesting, more informative, more caring, more helpful. I mean, it's just, but you gotta, you gotta make that step instead of just getting by with the simplest, easiest thing to do. You have to put out effort. You have to motivate yourself to go do something else. You know, yeah. look at, look at the, all the books you could read. Lots and lots of books. Look at the courses you could take. Lots and lots of courses. You know, the, this internet gives us a huge variety of information you're interested in whatever you have an interest in it well you could probably spend days on the internet finding out about it reading about it uh, you know you're interested in history you're interested in science you're interested you know what is it you're interested in and the problem is that most people say well, i'm not really interested in anything i just want to watch tv or go on social media well that's you see a change of attitude it's like you need to wake up and go do life, not just sit like a, you know, a bump on a log and let life walk over you. Right. Let life do you. Well, that social media and that TV is where do people end up who are kind of, you know, aren't doing anything. They've got nothing that they want to do. And usually they have nothing that they want to do because they are in some way depressed, unhappy, uh, whatever, and they want to just escape. They don't want to think about their problems. So they watch TV and they get on social media. And of course, all that does is push those problems just barely, you know, under their vision. So they don't have to deal with them directly, at least not right now while I'm watching TV and on social media, you know, I can press them down a little bit. And at least I can pretend that I'm not depressed or unhappy or dissatisfied with my life. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the, that's the problem. It's just all attitudinal, you know, what are you interested? Well, get interested in something. It's a very interested world, the interesting world that we live in. There's so much going on, so many things happening. And that doesn't mean become a news junkie. 
<laughs> it's not about the news is what you don't, you know, you don't need to keep up with all of that. If something is really important enough that you really need to know, yeah. you'll find out, <laughs> you'll know, you won't be able to escape it. It will come at you everywhere. You will find out about it. So you don't need to do that, but there's lots of interesting things out there, fun things. And if all you want is just entertainment, well, there's lots of books that are just entertaining, mm -hmm. but they're not TV programs, you know, and they're TV and a lot of books too, for that matter. And most movies are produced at the intellectual level of a 12 year old. Mm. That's the, that's what they aim for because that's where most people are. You kind of intellectually get bigger pictures until you get to be about 12 or so. And after that, you just get better at smoother in your interactions. But most people don't really become more literate or more learned or more what yeah, they, they pick up facts, but the facts are just day to day facts. So most all of our media is focused on the 12 year old that way. Young people get it, you know, older people can get it. Everybody does that. But that's not true of all books. That's probably true of most books. They're mostly, you know, focused on that same, that same group. But if you try, you can find some, and particularly the older books, you know, the classics, they weren't like that. They were focused on adults. That was adult reading material. And by adult reading material, I don't mean it has a lot of blood and guts and sex in it. You know? <laughs> adult in the sense that you have to have the experience of an adult to really appreciate what's going on in the book. But we don't have that now. Now, anything you watch on TV, 12 year old gets it just fine. There's no problem because that's what it's made for. But books, you know, if you read most any of the classical literature, that's not true. Try to get a 12-year-old to read, you know, <laughs> anything. Yeah, Shakespeare, uh, you know, Tale of Two Cities, uh, you know, just any kind of decent literature, and they'll have a hard time reading it. The, the language is it's difficult for them. The concepts, what's going on and why, all those things are difficult. You have to be an adult to read that. So most of us kind of let our minds settle into about that 12 year old space of literacy and understanding. And we just stay like that. That's why social media and watching TV seems like a, an easy non effort thing to do because that's us. That's the way we are, you know, right in that slot. So it's, there's so much more to life than that. You know, relationships. That's one of the things that my wife and I, Pamela, we find that you know we've been retired now for some years and where is that time where we just get to sit around and, and hang out with each other and and talk and you know just kind of be together we're too busy still there's too much going on so we both want to retire from being retired <laughs> so that we so that we have more time just to hang out together nice so you know our time is evenings every evening we do audiobooks Nice. And we do audiobooks of all sorts of things. Sometimes they're educational, sometimes they're just entertainment. But we find authors that we like and things and, you know, we listen to audiobooks. Nice. And of course, Pamela plays with stuff. She does either games or she's got a thing now called um, oh, I can think it's a little mag magnetic things that you flip around that attach to each other. Um, Oh, okay. Um, I know what you mean, I think. Yeah, it's got it's it's a bunch of little things that are all connected, but you can twist them and they flop together in different ways and you can build things. And then if you've got two or three of them, you, they can attach to each other and build something even bigger. So it's a uh, it's a good thing for her to do because she's never been really good with her spatial mm -hmm. sense. And a lot of females are like that. They don't have a real good sense of, you know, they pull up an object and turn it around like maps and where they are and directions and the spatial things, at least with Pamela, she was kind of challenged that way. 
but uh, doing this now has been helpful for her because it's all very spatial, you know, oriented. And she's been playing with that while she listens because she has to be doing at least two things at once, <laughs> if not three. <laughs> wow. Not me. I listen to a book. I'm totally consumed in a book. I don't have to do anything else. Matter of fact, I can't do anything else. If I had to do anything else, I'd have to turn the book off and do that thing. I've got a, a focus. You know, I have a very sharp focus. Of course, when I get focused, you have to almost walk up and, you know, and tap me on the shoulder to get my attention because I'm focused. But um, she's not like that. She has to do multiple things. If she just listened to a book, she'd fall asleep. Huh. It just wouldn't be enough for her to, to stay awake. Even if it's an interesting book, she can't do that. So she's constantly fiddling with some thing, doing puzzles, uh, do playing pet rescue, uh, just something else that she can do while she listens to a book. Wow. So that's uh, just her, her nature, I suspect. Mm -hmm. There are people like me who are very single focused kind of people and people like her who who aren't, you know, I'm always amazed when I go to a, an office, some place, like I go to the doctor's office or an office and there'll be usually a young girl sitting there and she's got a phone up on her shoulder like this. She's typing on a keyboard with the other hands and talking to someone, you know, all at the same time. And somehow she can juggle all that and do that. You know, and I look at them and say, how do you, <laughs> how do you do that? I could just do one of those things and, and only one, but females are good at parallel processing, much better than males are. And men tend to be better at, at sharp focus and, and uh, seeing, seeing things in their, in their mind, kind of geospatial, you know, thinking sort of things than the, than the females are. It's just way we're different. But anyway, that doesn't have anything to do with our conversation other than, does. you know, Pamela and I take, we, you know, we take that time and that's still not enough time. Right. That's only three or four hours and we're listening to a book. And sometimes we'll just turn the book off and talk for two or three hours, you know, and that's fun too. Sometimes we don't listen to a book. We just chat, but it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's nice to do things other than social media and TV to use up your time. Yeah. There's so many more interesting and fun and educational things, things you can learn, things that are interesting and fun to learn and useful. You know, there, there's lots of that available. Mm -hmm. Ideas, concepts, how do things work? Why do things work that way? At least for me, that's always been some of my questions, you know, well, I'm a scientist, so that kind of comes to me, you know, how do things work? How do they work that way? Why are they that way? Why are people the way they do, you know, or the way they are? Why do they do the things they do? What's driving them? Well, that's an interesting conversation. And you can, you can learn something about that and learn something about yourself at the same time, because you're different than everybody else. And what's the difference? And why is that difference? So the world is just full of interesting fun things to think about and to do, you shouldn't have to escape someplace right. to find something to do or something that's interesting. And yes, there's advantages and disadvantages everywhere. So if you just deal with what you've got, you probably can find happiness right there, unless what you've got is really a, a very dysfunctional situation. Mm -hmm. If it is, then get out of it. Don't stay in a dysfunctional situation. If it, if you try to work with it, but it just doesn't seem to work, then move on. You know, do something else. Go walk 10 miles. <laughs> it'll change your life. Right, Laura? Just go walk 10 miles. Every day, it'll change, it'll change your life. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you, you, you meet new people. Yeah. You do new things. You start feeling better about yourself because you have energy and you're doing something and you're doing something that a whole lot of people, it's not that they can't do it, but they don't right. and they won't because it's too much trouble, too much like work. So when you have that attitude that, well, it's a lot of trouble and it's a lot of work 
takes a lot of time. So what do you do instead? Social media and watch TV? <laughs> oh, come on. Talk about something that sucks up time. Well, but it isn't much work. That's true. But living your life to avoid work is just not a good attitude. Right. We, we, you know, we get invigorated by doing, by connecting, by things that we do. And to sit around and, and just feel like, well, I don't have anything to do, so I do social media because that will distract me from thinking about how miserable my life is. And I'll watch TV for the same reason, because that will distract me from thinking how terrible my life is. That's not a good place to be. You just need to change who you are, change your perspective, change your attitude, and get positive. So I think that's your, you know, what's your best life? Eh, it'll come to you. It'll just happen. Your best life will just fall in front of you if you just get rid of those those fears and get rid of that you know offload all that uh, smallness look at big pictures what's really important right. all the little details are really not all that important nothing that you've seen on tv in the last 20 years is probably really important <laughs> nothing you've seen on social media is probably very important either <laughs> Maybe there's a tidbit, you know, every decade or two that's important, but mostly that stuff's not important in the big picture, but you get so wound up about it in the little picture. So we spend all of our time wound up tight over issues. Why are those people doing that? That's so stupid. You know, we get all wound up over stuff. That's just little picture junk. It's just the stuff that's people doing what people do. It's a whole bunch of people that are all full of fear, all interacting with each other with their interacting with each other with their fear, making messes of everything, wasting their time. That's what you find out there. Hmm. Well, don't let that depress you. That's them. That's not you. <laughs> you know, you can fill your life full of more meaningful things. You can you can do other things and and uh, yeah, there's lots of choices. I think walking ten miles is a really good thing to do. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> what is it? Two hours out of your day? Two hours out of yeah. Day. Two hours out of your day. Yeah. Well, two hours isn't much. Most people spend three times that between social media and TV. True. And they don't end up healthier, or with a better attitude. You know, it's so you get to choose what you do with your life, and how you live it, and what's important to you and what isn't. And instead of slipping into that 12 year old well what's the least work i have to do to get by well that's the way 12 year olds think that's i don't know true. if you know any 12 year olds but that's basically the way 12 year olds think you know what's what's the what's the least i have to do in order to slip by hmm. and that's where most of us are unfortunately but it's hard to be happy in that situation because you're really passing up opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to be happy and to and to uh, have an interesting, fulfilling life. Right. You're just sitting down doing as little as possible. I think about what you've said, and the one thing that comes up is being present. I mean, you talk about the I mean, obviously Pamela, but also the woman you know, when you go to your doctor appointment, I mean, it's how you're not present when you're watching TV, No. do an audio book. I would have to be extremely present. I much prefer to have either my Kindle or real book in my hands. I don't know why, but to me, it's reading more than listening. Um, mm -hmm. But to be present, even in, even when we're eating, you know, it's it's about mindful eating. It's mm -hmm. it's being present so that we can be aware of everything that's going on around us instead of that focus that we tend to not see everything around us. We're we tend to either be completely distracted and not living our best life, or we're. I mean, to me, I guess living my best life is about being really, really present, so that you're yeah, all I, aware I, of everything. I agree. You have to be present do everything for a reason 
And the reason ought to be a good reason. You know, it ought to, not just because, well, that's the least work is to, is to sit here and be distracted. There should be a good reason for why you do things and you ought to pay attention to what you're doing. And why. And, and yeah, well, I'm like you, you know, if I listen to a book, I'm totally consumed by that book and I don't know what's going on in my environment. You know, I, I don't know what's happening. I just, I'm in the book right. and I'm totally focused on that. Pamela is not that way. She can't sit down and read a book because it's too slow. It's too, oh. there's not enough going on for her. So she was kind of a non-reader until she got the audiobooks. Mm -hmm. And then she just loves audiobooks. But <laughs> to sit down and read a book, you see, you can't do anything else when you read a book. You know, you can't walk, you can't talk, you can't do anything else except read the book. And she's just not a one thing at a time girl. So she can't just read a book. Now, maybe she could read a book while she was I don't know, uh, dancing or I don't know, walking around, you know, reading and walking. Maybe she could pace back and forth while she was reading her book or do something else. But to just sit still right. and read a book is really hard. Now, maybe that makes her ADD. You know, maybe she's just one of those people that sitting still and doing a single thing is just a really hard thing to do. But uh, she's found audiobooks to be just delightful and she consumes. You know, we probably consume, I don't know, 100 books a year or something. We consume lots of books because we spend three or four hours at it every evening. So it, it, uh, we just, what do you want to read next? You know, what do you want to read next? So we do some just for fun. But anyway, she can't be that present on a single thing before she just feels like she's got to do something else. Mm -hmm. It's probably an ADD basic, you know, personality that those those people like that can't just be still and focus unless they're maybe their legs shaking. You know, you have people sit and their legs sitting there going like this, you know, all the time. That's because just sitting still and being focused is is almost unbearable. It's, it's too much. I don't know. I'm not like that. So I, I don't really know exactly what's going on in their mind. But I know it's a difficult thing for them, for them to do. But she, she loves audiobooks. And suddenly the world of books just kind of opened up for her when when we got to uh, the audiobooks. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I think about um, when it, when we get distracted, or when we're really focused, I mean, it's a different energy, but, I, and I'd love to hear from people as to if they can be fully present while they're doing a whole bunch of different things. Cause I think that would be really interesting to know because I don't know, like, mm -hmm. I think, you know, a lot of people when they're not mindfully eating, they'll watch TV, they'll do, they'll do all sorts of things at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's not because they're ADD. That's just because they're not wanting to be conscious. Yes, I, I, I would agree with that. Yeah. But yeah. I don't, I think they're like Pamela, they're, if people do have to be, you know, doing several things at a time, because we know lots of people like that. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen them, the, that nervous leg thing that happens. <laughs> I've seen that. I yeah. lots of people have that. Yeah. They can't just sit still. They can't just do meditation. And that's the other thing. Like I prefer to do my meditation while I'm walking. Mm -hmm. I like to have, because it makes me more present. I, I'm more aware so I can see more things in my periphery. I'm more, I guess it just, it mm -hmm. helps me become more present by doing something physical. And, and that is sort of my meditation, but I, and then I could never be that person who just sort of sits and goes, um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I, mean, I could do it for a little while, but my head <laughs> will start to get in the way. And it's like, no, 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 that's yeah. not me. But so I think we all maybe have different ways of sure. being present and we have to find it's kind of, I guess it's kind of like how we intuit things. We all have, mm -hmm. we all have our own gifts. So we have to find that happy medium mm -hmm. as to how they work together or how we do it. So it's interesting. Concept. Yeah. Well, you've just, You've just uh, uh, put out a, a, 
a whole bunch of interesting, fun things for people to do, yeah. right? Discover how they interact with their environment and how those interactions can be more or less functional depending on how they do them, how many of them that they do, you know, whatever. But yeah, see, I'm very slow. Pamela's <laughs> very fast at everything. She is a speed demon. Okay. Uh, I am very slow at everything I do. So, you know, when I eat, I look at what it is that I'm eating. I look at the color. I smell it. Mm -hmm. Then I slowly, I pick some up and I taste it. And I focus on what does it taste like and the textures. And I enjoy it. Right. And then I take a little bit of time afterwards just to, oh, that was nice. And then maybe I'll go back for the next bite. <laughs> and Pamela used to be more that way than she is now, but she swore that, see, we had three children in three years. You now she popped one out after another, three in a row. And with when you have three babies, she swore those babies were trying to starve her to death because <laughs> suddenly she had to eat and fast, do everything fast because she didn't have a moment, you know, that she wasn't on demand someplace else. So she learned to do things very quickly because she had to. She was parallel processing three three babies at once. And I think she's never slowed yeah. down afterwards. And it's hard for her. I think she's probably a little ADD to begin with, but that just that just tipped it off. So, yeah, it's it's interesting because I'll be maybe a, you know a third to halfway through my meal and she's done. <laughs> yeah. And I say slow down, and she says yes, I need to. But <laughs> she says but my children, you know, ruined me. You know, I, I started eating fast then, and I haven't been able to stop since. But yeah, I'm very slow about everything I do. I'm very deliberate. And I know exactly what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And I take pleasure in it. There's pleasure in doing things. There's pleasure in walking. There's pleasure in eating. There's pleasure in, you know, reading a book. There's pleasure in all kinds of things. And you don't want to speed through it to see how fast you can get to the end. That's not the point. The point is to enjoy it, savor it, connect to it. What does this mean? How does what you just read in that book, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, how does that function with you? Yeah. You know, how is that? So you learn from it. How is that different than the way you see things? And isn't it interesting how different people see things different ways? Mm -hmm. So my mind is thinking about all those kinds of things. So which in a way my mind's busy as well, but not me. I just tend to physically be slow about everything I do. I even used to walk slow because I was taking in everything in my environment. And you can't do that. If you walk fast, you have to pay attention, or you'll run into things or people. <laughs> so you have to pay a little more attention about what you, where you are and what you're doing. But if you walk slow, people just kind of move around you and you don't have to pay a whole lot of attention. But I'm better at that. I don't I'm not as slow as I uh, as I used to be. But uh, anyway, I'm a very slow and deliberate person and what I do. And I am one of those persons that can just go meditate and do nothing. Right. Just sit still and do nothing. Well, I just took today, Pamela's having some eye, minor eye surgery, getting new lenses in her eye. And, uh, you know, I get there and you have to wait till they're done so you can pick her up because her eyes are dilated and she can't drive that way. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? I have an hour and a half to two hours with nothing to do. Now, if I if I was Pamela, I'd go shopping. I'd have to do something else. I go out, sit in my car for an hour and a half to two hours. And I don't find that to be an unpleasant thing to do. I'm I'm absorbed. You know, I take some of my time looking at my environment, the changes, see people coming and going and so on. And other than that, I just kind of roll inside my head and uh and do other things, other interesting things. So sitting still in the car for two hours is not boring. It's not a hard thing to do. I have to, you know, if I go sit in a waiting room where, you know, the car's just more comfortable because the seats are more comfortable than the little benches and things you have in waiting rooms. So I just rather go sit in the car and let them call me when it's time to come. But if I sit in the waiting room, I'll sit there and typically I'll just close my eyes and I'll be still. And 
I don't know. I don't, you know, I, I hear a little bit of what's going around. Sometimes I'll focus on that. Other times I'll just disappear right. and I'll come back and check and see what time it is and say, oh, you know, it's just been a half an hour. You know, I guess I'll go off again. But sitting still is something that's easy for me to do. It's, um, it's just part of my nature, not Pamela's. You know, she, she couldn't, the idea, go sit in the car and wait for two hours would be like rubbing her fingernails down a chalkboard. You know, <laughs> I can't do that. That would drive me insane. But I find it uh, easy and pleasant to do that. And it's actually a two hours that I've enjoyed. Sometimes I'll turn the radio on, listen to music, um, whatever, you know, but I, I am just slow. I do everything slowly. It always takes me two or three times more time to accomplish anything than it takes Pamela to accomplish the same thing. So I'm a little frustrating to her for that reason, because she, she has to uh, put up with somebody who's moving at glacial speeds <laughs> while she's moving at the speed of light all the time. But it works out all right. But so however you are, you know, you should be present. And I can see that she can do two or three things at once and be present in all of them. But she can't be 100% present in all of them. Right. You can't do that. You only have one present and you can divide that up into pieces, but she can be 33 and a third percent focused in all three of them or 80% in this one and 20% in that one. And she does that. So a lot of times when we're reading books, she'll stop and she'll say, what, what was that about? Who's that guy? <laughs> you know, and we'll stop the, you know, it's easy to stop. You just say, Alexa, pause and the book stops. <laughs> And then uh, you know, she'll ask me, I'll tell her, because I don't miss any of the details because I'm plugged in. And she goes, okay, you know, Alexa, continue. And then we go on with the book. So she doesn't pay attention to the detail that I do, but she does a lot more than what I get done. So I think it's just different ways of being, and you know, that's, that's fine. So however you are, learn to do what you do on purpose and for a reason. Even if you're focusing on three things and do those three things. And you can't be as focused as you would be if you just were focused on one of them. But if you need three things to be focused on, then do that. But the worst way to go through life is like a zombie, mm -hmm. where everything you do is the default. You know, what's the default thing? Oh, well, go sit down and you know, eat dinner, go sit down, and watch TV. That's the default. What's the default thing when you're otherwise not busy. Oh, go up on social media and see what's happening. Oh, look at the news and see what's going on. And all of these default programs are things that just swallow up your time and your energy and leave you feeling empty. They're all empty things. They don't give you anything. If anything, they leave you less than you were before you started. So if you just run the default programs, you're not going to be a very happy, positive person. You're going to be kind of negative because most of what you see on that TV and reading social media is all negative. So you spend your time in negative space, you're going to be more negative. And you know, that's just the way it's going to be. So don't uh, take the default. Don't go through life being a zombie. If you have to do something, do it mindfully. Do it because it needs to be done or you want to do it. And like my father uh, told me at least a hundred times, <laughs> anything worth doing is worth doing right. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do, do it carefully, do it thoroughly and do it well. You know, don't just get it done and that's good enough, but do it well, take pride in everything you do, no matter whether it's picking paper up off the floor, well, get all the little pieces. You know, don't just get some of them or the most of them or the big ones that are easy. Do the, get the ones that are harder too, you know, be thorough. So it's just a way of approaching life. And if you think about it, that also is a way of lowering entropy. Being mindful is the low entropy path. Definitely. It's the low entropy path. Having your head into social media or watching TV, that's the high entropy path. 
There's nothing there other than watching other people be negative, listening to other people being negative for the most part, because most of our entertainment is about negativity. What we find funny is somebody's having a problem. Somebody's unhappy, somebody's miserable, somebody's crying, somebody gets killed, somebody, you know, everything that entertains us is all about problems hmm. and things that are negative. We don't watch people smiling and happy. They just have to show us maybe a little bit of that once in a while, you know, because that's what takes place in the story. But the, the main news is what's negative, what's wrong, what's, what's evil, what's, what's harmful, what's going to bite you, you know, and it's all about fear and negativity. And you immerse, and so is social media. Hmm. You know, if you immerse yourself in that stuff, well, you know, it's going to bring you down. Yeah, that's that's the default choice. No thinking. I don't have to think. I can distract myself and won't have to actually be alone with myself, which is the worst possible thing that could happen. That's why people turn on their TV and then go off to do something else just so they have the noise in the background right. keeps them from actually having to ever be themselves, think of themselves, deal with who they are and what they are and how their choices are and what their attitude is, they can always keep their mind busy on something else, doing something else. Nothing that takes much effort, but just keeps you preoccupied to the point that you don't have to look at reality square in the face and deal with it. And if you go through life like that, then you're not going to find your, your best life. You're not going to find happiness. You're going to just find a uh, you know, life is going to be a hard slog through basically, you know, struggles, 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 unhappiness, sadness, very little joy. So you kind of have to pull yourself up out of that mud puddle and take a look around and do something that's positive. Learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. Try something new. Go fix something that's broken. <laughs> do, do something you know, and learn how to fix it first. Yeah, let's, life is full of interesting things. We just have to reach out and grab these opportunities right. and not hide. I guess a lot of that social media and TV is people who are running away, escaping. But what they're escaping mostly is themselves. It's not that they're escaping that big, ugly world out there. I think they're escaping from themselves for the most part. Yeah. You know, if you don't like yourself, that's a big problem. Definitely. You, need to, you need to change that, change what you're doing, who you are. Not liking yourself and not feeling yourself to be what you would like to be is a problem. You need to be what you'd like to be. <laughs> you just have to be it. Start wherever you are. Nobody gets to start at the top. Everybody has to start from wherever they just happen to be now. That's where you start from. One little step at a time. All right. Well, good show for, for our new season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We're almost on the hour, aren't we? We are. Yeah. <laughs> Great. We are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we do talk about the same things a lot, but because that's what's important to talk about. You know, that is, life isn't that complicated. You know, life really isn't all that complicated. It's just a few basic things that if you understand, then everything goes from terrible to, to great. But those few things are hard to, hard to change in a life that's been doing it the negative way and the distracted way for years and years and years. That's what makes it hard. You have bad habits, mm. and it takes a, some courage, and it takes some force of will to change those bad habits. But it's eminently doable. Everybody could end up you know, with a life of joy and peace and satisfaction if they would try. They just try for it. It may take five or 10 tries, they may not get it real well on the first try, but that's life too. It's just opportunities. Right. 
Yeah. So you're not going to just step out of misery into, you know, into, into peace and tranquility overnight, but you have to get out there, right? You run two hours or walk two hours a day. You didn't do that the first time. No, <laughs> you, just, <Definitely> not. <laughs> you just start, you know, and, and it, it just takes a long time before you figure out, oh, my street shoes aren't really good for this. And, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I need to uh, do a little more aerobics. So I, you know, I don't run out of breath and it just I have to build up some muscles because now my legs are sore. Okay. So you have some pain, you know, and you've learned some lessons. That's good. That's not bad. That's good. Keep on doing it. Yes, it is definitely the journey, not the destination. <laughs> exactly. It is the journey. It's how you deal with everyday life is what makes you find that that good life, that happiness. It's how you deal with every detail. Is it positive or negative? Are you escaping, trying to distract yourself from from life because you find it unpleasant? Well, find it pleasant. Find ways to find it pleasant. Do things. Learn things. Grow, be. You know, it's it's again. It's it's not that hard to say. It's not that hard to understand. It's just hard to do because it takes gumption and willpower. Yes. And that's where people fail. They don't have the gumption to get out there and do it, and have the willpower to go keep at it until it works. So that's the that's kind of the failure. It's so much easier just to do social media and watch TV. You know go to your job, turn the crank, do whatever you have to do, you know, go home, go through the same motions. And pretty soon you don't have to think at all. You, you're just a, a zombie walking through life without mind ever waking up. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the way most people live and realize most people are up to here with fear. <laughs> they're all full of fear yeah. and they're all full of ego and they're all full of beliefs. And you have to, that has to be okay with you. You have to accept that's just the way it is. And I'll be positive and I'll try to be helpful, but I'm not in charge. I'm not the master of the universe. It's not my thing to fix other people. It's my thing to fix me. And that kind of takes you out of needing to fix others right. and complaining about others, complaining about their behavior. It's, it's not as hard as it sounds to end up in a very happy space in life. It's just, it's not, but it does take work. Yeah. And it's not that you get there and then stop working. It's something you work at forever. You always have to be mindful of what you're doing, why you're doing it and do it well. It's, uh, takes focus. TV doesn't take focus. Social <laughs> media doesn't take focus. As a matter of fact, it destroys your focus. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Well, you've been listening to News of the Heart. We've been getting the heart of what matters with Tom Campbell and living our best life. Maybe about choices, about positivity, and why why we're making the choices we're making. All right. So we'll be back next month. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Laurie.